Paul Quayle, the Director, Director of APAC Assistance. I'm doing a quick overview of the main issues in East Asia Pacific this Wednesday, the 27th of February, from the wonderful Sane Beach, south of Hohen. Firstly, in Thailand, a ranger was killed and another injured, along with a civilian, by a roadside bomb in the Banang Sata district of Yala province in southern Thailand yesterday. Police have blamed the separatist insurgents active in the region. Bomb disposal officers also destroyed a second bomb nearby. Also in Thailand, General Prawit Wongsawan, the Deputy Chief of the National Council for Peace and Order, was appointed as head of the Senator Selection Committee by Prime Minister Prayut chan -cha. Prayut declined to comment on why he appointed General Prawit to head the Senator Selection Committee. General Prawit said that he will select 194 senators from different professions, but he will not select any active soldiers. However, he did not rule out retired military officers being included in the Senate. The opposition parties have claimed that this is an unfair move, especially after General Prayut was accepted as Prime Minister candidate for the Palang Pacharat Party, and they pointed out that 250 senators will be chosen either directly or indirectly by General Prayut. As per the Constitution of 2017, the Thai Parliament consists of 750 members. 500 members are elected by the people for four years to the House of Representatives. The Senate consists of 250 members with a five-year term. Of the 250 seats, 194 are selected by the ruling National Council for Peace and Order. Six seats are reserved for the armed forces, including the Commander-in-Chief of the Army, the Defence Permanent Secretary and the National Police Chief. The remaining 50 members represent 10 professional and social groups, including bureaucrats, teachers, judges, farmers and private companies. They are elected by panels representing these groups approved by the Election Commission. In the Philippines, the Chief Minister of the Autonomous Region of Bangsamora Murad Ebrahim said he will not intervene on the dispute over the Sabah province between the Philippines and Malaysia on the northern part of the Borneo Island. The dispute has been a contentious issue since the 1960s. In 2018, a constitutional committee was formed by President Rodrigo Duterte, which came up with a draft federal charter that included Sabah as part of a Philippine territory, basing it on a historical belief that the Sultan of Sulu received Sabah from the Sultan of Brunei for helping to stop a rebellion in the 17th century. A hell of a gift for a very large tract of land, I should add. Malaysia included Sabah into its territory in the 1960s, and it has been paying US dollars, $13,400, to the heirs of Sultan of Sulu as session money. A tiny amount for a vast tract of land, I might add. In China, China has protested after two United States Navy warships sailed through the Taiwan Strait yesterday. China has opposed the passage and blamed the US for taking provocative actions. China has repeatedly demanded that the US cut all ties with Taiwan, which China regards as a breakaway province, and stated it will be taken back by force by China if necessary. The ship movement can be seen as a show of force, reiterating the US commitment to defend Taiwan as committed to in the USA's Taiwan Relations Act passed in 1979 which says the USA is bound by law to help defend Taiwan, Taiwan against any forceful takeover. In Vietnam, the United States President Donald Trump arrived at Hanoi yesterday for the second round of talks with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, a follow-up from the Singapore summit last year. They will meet today at the Metropole Hotel in Hanoi at 6.30pm and have a 20-minute one-on-one discussion after last night's informal dinner. The US will seek to convince North Korea to disband its nuclear weapons and North Korea seeks relaxation and economic sanctions with a formal declaration ending the Korean War, which began in 1950. Hundreds of police and army personnel have been deployed in Hanoi as part of the security arrangements for the summit. Clients are advised to be aware of the traffic restrictions in several parts of the city. In Papua New Guinea, a major anti-corruption drive is being conducted by the Forest Authority to identify and sack rogue officers. High-ranking officers have been sidelined from investigations to try and attempt to somehow keep the investigation impartial. Major allegations were received against senior officials prompting the investigation. Papua New Guinea has rich forest resources and a multi-million dollar timber industry which attracts illegal trading. The Minister of Forestry said that the General Orders and the Forestry Act are very explicit and if anyone has breached the rules, they have and will be terminated. 
in Indonesia. Indonesia's disaster agency said rescuers are searching for survivors after the collapse of an illegal mine in the Bolang Mongodal jurisdiction area of the island of North Sulawesi yesterday. Rescuers fear that there are more than 60 people trapped in the mine. One person has been found dead and 13 have been rescued. Though banned by the central government, small-scale illegal gold mining is present throughout Indonesia due to poor enforcement of laws by local authorities and due to widespread rampant endemic corruption. Please check us out at www.apacassistance.com where you can buy our advisories, alerts and assessments on a pay-for-view basis or email us at info at apacassistance.com to inquire about our East Asia Pacific or South Asia risk.